As its name suggests, Sublime Text is a text editor, and whether you're using it to edit regular text files, your prose, or even source code files in a programming language of your choice, one thing you've probably found yourself wanting to do is determining what exactly has changed in your file since you started working on it? And as it turns out, Sublime has some functionality that makes that pretty easy to do. So in today's video, let's discuss incremental diff. Hello, fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odat Nerd here. Welcome to this video on incremental diff in Sublime Text 3. Now, before we get into that, as always, a reminder, if you're finding these videos in any way useful or helpful, I would love to know about it. So please use those buttons down below the video to thumb subscribe and share as you deem appropriate. And if you have any questions or comments on the content of this video or any of the videos on the channel or suggestions for other Sublime Text topics you'd like me to cover in a future video, you can leave those down in the comment section below or hit me on Twitter at Odat. Nerd. Now, the topic we're talking about today is incremental diff in Sublime Text 3. Now, this is something that was added back in Sublime Text 3.2 in Build 3200, and it it allows you to easily track while you have files open the changes that have been made since you started working on that file, particularly since you last opened it. And there's some other features there, but we're going to get to those. Now, in order to demonstrate this sort of thing, we're going to need a file to work with. And your file can be anything at all that you want. It doesn't matter for the purposes of this. For our demonstration, I'm just going to create a simple file here, and I will create a few paragraphs of lorem text using this plugin that I developed. And let's save this, and we're going to save it on my desktop as sample.text, like so. And with that in place, we jump up to the top of the file, and we can go ahead and start our demonstration. When it comes to working with text files, and that's text files like this, or even source code or any sort of file, really the operations you can do boil down to three distinct things. You might decide that there's content in your file that you no longer need. So you might delete a couple of lines or a couple of characters or something along those lines. You might decide that you need to add more content to a file. Perhaps if I duplicate these two lines here, like so. And what if you actually were going to make a change to content of a file if you were doing some sort of actual editing. You might to say that this isn't beta testing, it's gamma testing like so. Now that some edits have been made to the file and I've moved on, I might be curious what exactly was it that I changed in this file? I might have been interrupted while I was making those changes or looking at reference documentation. Now it turns out that there's a feature in Sublime that would help you with this and it's existed for a long time. If you open the context menu, there's an item labeled show unsaved changes. And if you choose that, this diff panel will pop up. And if you're not familiar with diff output, it's basically a way to show you changes between two files by showing you what lines were removed or added or modified. It's pretty common to see these tools like the diff tool in Linux generate this output and so do version control systems like subversion and git and so on will generate items in this same uh, diff format. It's called a unified diff. And we can see here, if we look at this output, that I deleted two lines. That's what the dash in front of those lines means. And I also added two lines. That's what the pluses in those two lines mean there. And I also modified a line. And in the case of a modification, the diff shows you that one line was removed and a new line was put in its place. And this is great for what it is, but there are some issues with it. And the most obvious of those is that if I decided that I wanted to save the file because I'm finished with my changes, well, this menu option doesn't do anything anymore because it's showing me unsaved changes, but there are no unsaved changes. I've saved the file. And even so, the diff shows you lines that have changed and the context of them, but if you wanted to actually find those lines in your file, you'd have to go searching around to see where the edits were. In a case like this, these lines are very close together. It's pretty easy to track that sort of thing, but in a larger file, that might be more difficult. Enter incremental diff. 
Now you may have noticed there are some indicators in the gutter area of this file that appeared when I made those edits. There's a red triangle between lines one and two. There's a green bar tracking lines six and seven. And on line 12, there's a yellow bar. And that's Sublime Text's incremental diff in action. That's Sublime's way of telling me that I removed some lines between one, lines one and two. That's what the red triangle means. That I added lines lines six and seven, that's what the green means, and that I made a modification on line 12, which is what that means. And we'll see that even though I saved the file, those indicators remain. And in fact, this functionality is tracking the state of the file as it existed on disk at the time when I opened it. So as long as I don't close this file, these indicators and the indicators for any other changes I might make will remain in the file. So as you're, say, iterating on your web page, you may need to make changes and then view it in a browser. Or as you're working on your program of some variety in whatever programming language you use, you might want to make changes to compile it and run it. You can keep track of the changes you have made in that particular session, which is nice. If you want to clear these, you have to close the file and open it again. And it's also worth mentioning that this functionality will integrate with Git, allowing you to track not only the state of this file since it was open, but the state of this file as compared to how it appears in Git. But we're not going to talk about that here because Git integration in Sublime is a topic for another video. It's nice to be able to see these indicators in the buffer, and in this case, they're all clumped up near the top of the file, but what if your file was large? You'd have to scroll around to find them. Now, it turns out one of the key features of incremental diff is being able to navigate between these changes in the code. And if we were to go to the Go To menu, we can see there are items here labeled Next Modification and Previous Modification, which are bound to Control Period and Control control comma. And if you look at your keyboard, the key, the comma and period keys have the less than and greater than signs, which is your uh, indication that that's going to move you backwards or forwards through the changes. So if I was to press control period, for example, then I jump to the location of the first change. And I can jump to see this. And we can see that Sublime is covering the selected area with the selection when I do this. So in the case of an addition, it's telling me that I these two lines are the lines that I added. And if I come down here, we can see that this is the place where a modification has occurred in the file like so. And I can also jump up here to the place where the deletion happened. And I can't really select anything there because the text is gone. So you can imagine if you were working on a, a big file, like a, say, for example, you're working on a web page and you have your CSS at the top and you have your other parts of the page at the bottom. You could tweak your CSS, jump down, work on the content of the page using those CSS classes. If you need to be able to jump to the do other changes to modify the CSS, navigate directly there by using the key bindings to get back to those changes and then navigate back the other way to your code and you're good to go. Now these indicators are indeed useful and being able to navigate between them is useful, but that diff functionality as we saw it at the beginning of the video showed us what was actually different. And that is actually possible in incremental diff as well. If you look in the edit menu, specifically under the text items, there's a couple of items here and we're going to talk about revert modification in just a second. But here we can see toggle diff hunk, which for me on Windows is control K, control forward slash. The same key binding is available on Linux, and if you're on Mac OS, you'd use Command K, Control forward slash instead. And I'm going to go ahead and use the key bindings for that. And if I was to jump, say, up to the place where the deletion happened and press that key binding, we can see those two lines that we deleted are injected in there. They have a red background to tell us. We can see the line numbers don't track there because those lines no longer exist in the file, but that's where they did exist previously. So if you wanted to know what you deleted from a file, you could determine that. Similarly, if we were to jump to the place where we added some text and use that key binding, 
what we actually see here, and we'll have to zoom out to be able to see it, is that those lines have a green background on them to indicate that they've been added. And here we added whole lines. So those two whole lines are there now and didn't used to be. That's what that green highlight is trying to tell us. And if we were to jump to this part here where we made a modification and used the key binding, then in what we see here is what we saw in the diff. There's a red line that says what used to be here that was removed, that's why it's red, and a green line showing us what's there now. And also, the actual text that changed is in a slightly different color as well. So we can see that the diff functionality is determined that we changed the BET to a G, and then we added MMA on here. That's how it has calculated this change from beta to gamma. And in all of these uh, items here, particularly in the deleted sections, we can actually bring in the mouse and select text here and copy it out and paste it. So if you had to deleted some code and wanted to bring part of it back, you could do that very easily by using that mechanism. Now Sublime is tracking the state of this file to be able to tell us how it's changed and that gives us the ability, as we just saw in the menu, to revert changes as well, to selectively say, this change, I do not want it. And as we already know, we could toggle the diff hunk open and just copy parts of that out if we wanted partial reverts. We could copy what used to be there and then replace everything with that partial copy, which is a simple copy-paste operation. But if you wanted to remove whole changes, then you could revert that hunk. And that command is found up here again in the edit text menu as revert modification. And we'll see here that this is bound to control K, control Z on Windows, which is also the same key binding on Linux. On Mac OS, that will be Command K, Command Z instead. You can always check the menu to see what the currently bound key binding for any known commands are. Now, if you use the origami package, uh, which I covered in a previous video, to do pain management, that key binding is something that origami defines in its key binding. And as a result, it overrides the default binding that Sublime added when it added this command. So if you're using origami, there's an extra step that you have to take here if you want to use that key binding. And to do that, you would go into your preferences key bindings. And again, that opens a window I'm going to maximize. And this is the binding here, control K, control Z to revert modification, which I found in the left hand pane and just copied over to the user settings over here on the right so that that key binding will take on its normal meeting. If you wanted to, you could map that to a different key. In fact, in my own personal build of Sublime, I use a different key binding to do a revert because I use Origami's key binding for this uh, quite a bit, and I trained myself to use that one before this functionality came out. You could, of course, make this any key binding you want as well. But I thought I'd point that out because if you're using uh, that package, then this won't do what you would expect it to do in this case. But we can go ahead and cycle up. So if we're at the plate where we deleted those lines, if I hit that key binding, control K, control Z, that line is now re-added. The indicator in the gutter goes away because those lines aren't deleted any longer. And if I jumped to these ones and did the same key binding, now those lines are no longer added. It has selectively removed them. And of course, we can also jump down to here and revert that change. And that is going to require two operations because as we saw, the way that Sublime saw that word changing was a little different than we might expect. But now I can save the file and I'm back to the full state of the file as it originally existed when I started out. Now the nice thing about this is if you're making changes to a file and you realize that a change you made a couple of minutes ago was something you should not have made, normally you'd want to undo, but if you did that, you might have to undo changes you did intend to make to get back to the point where you made the change you didn't intend to make, and you'd have to re-edit things again. With the incremental diff functionality, you can easily jump to the correct location and just revert that one change and leave all the other changes present. So there we have incremental diff 
easily determine where the changes in your files are, jump between those modifications, see what's different, and take changes away. It's a pretty simple feature once you get the hang of it, but I have found myself that it has really enhanced my usage of Sublime Text. I hope it will enhance your usage of Sublime Text as well, and I hope that you found this video useful, helpful, and informative. And if you have, please use those buttons down below to thumb subscribe and share as you deem appropriate. And as always, if you have any questions or comments on the content of this video or any of my videos, or you have suggestions for other Sublime Text topics you'd like me to cover in a future video, leave those down in the comment section below or hit me on Twitter at OdatNerd. But until the next video, this is OdatNerd asking you to please have a sublime day.